Do you like sushi? Hmm? Oh, sushi? Oh, I practically live off the stuff. You might say the mysteries of the Orient are no mystery to me. Well, between chopsticks and some unfamiliar Japanese terminology, selecting your sushi can be a bit intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. And Lee Chow is with Tobio Sushi and Bar. Hi there. Hi, how are you doing today? Good. All right, before we talk about this, I want to talk a little bit about you. Okay. Uh, you're one of the people that makes Houston such a great place and a great place for food, for sure. First generation American, your parents came over here after the Vietnam War. Yes, they came from the Vietnam War. Uh, to try to escape, you know, all the hardships of warship. So they're over here, you know, I'm first generation. So, you know, I'm proud to be out here doing things and, you know, giving back to community and opening a sushi restaurant where, you know, we kind of explore what we were all about. Yeah, because so. yeah, you're very much American, but you have that Vietnamese culture as well. And then, of course, the Asian culture, which, you know, fish and rice and things like that are a part of the food scene. Okay, yeah. Tobio, uh, um, what, what, what does that, like, basically mean? Tobio means fine fish. So we picked that name because it means jumping outside of our comfort zone. You don't normally see fish that fly. So, you know, we're kind of like reaching for the stars, reaching for something that is, you know, people think they're unattainable. So, you know, we want to, you know, reach for our dreams. Yeah, so, yeah. Really the thing cool. I like about sushi, though, is you can go in and you literally can sit down and customize it every time and get something different every time. Yes, every single time. I mean, we have things from nigiris to different kind of rolls and we accompany it with different sauces and things that complement your, your fish that you know, in ways that people haven't seen before. Yeah, like you have like uni flight, which is sea urchin, uh, bluefin flight, which is tuna. You can try some things that might sound different and strange to you, but that's the cool thing about this, again, is you can try it in small bites. Yes, yeah, small bites. Uh, you don't want overly large bites. A lot of places, you know, you think you need bigger is better. It's not always. You want to really let the fish speak for itself. Yeah. You know? Ingredients and quality is what really makes us our direction that we Because if you really for. love it, you can always order some more. Okay, you have a thing called the Fish Box Experience. What is that? Fish Box Experience is something that we kind of came up with. It's kind of like an omakase. If you heard of omakase, it's mm -hmm. chef's choice, and then they give you different kinds of cuts of fish. Well, this one is something that we kind of thought about a while, for a little bit of a while, how to, to kind of put it out there. So we order a fish box from Japan. And it takes about a week to get here, so we do it once a month. Mm -hmm. uh, we set a date, and we have people sign up. We try to do it for about six people. Okay. And what it is is 12 to 15 different kinds of fish. It's kind of a surprise when it comes to us. So when it comes, we unveil it, and we break it down, we blanch it, we, we torch it, we smoke it all from there right in front of the guests and some of the dishes we, we build right in front of the guests. So uh -huh. an experience that you can't really find anywhere else right now. Yeah, one of the other things that's important for you all too is that you get the ingredients, some of them are, are like from you know other countries. You get the, the real deal. Yes, we do. Uh, things like ginger and then our fresh wasabi. Uh, we get a lot of our fish from Japan as you can kind of look around um, on the table. I mean, we get J Japanese fish like Renko Dai, Kosho Dai, and then these are some of our sashimi plates that yeah. we have. And every detail, this is ice right here, but this ice is like not done overnight. It takes how long to put this ice together? Six days. So Six days. our chef really loves uh, architect and mountains and the earth. So he wanted to kind of duplicate that. That is a painstaking That's process so cool. that I've seen him do. So every single day we get the colors and then we put a little bit, we break it. And then after that, he does it again for six more days. Wow. So. Okay. Uh, we may call it all sushi or sashimi or whatever, but I just call it pretty. But you're going to put some on here and give me a little test of, on identifying some things, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, we're starting with which one's nigiri? This one's nigiri right here. So nigiri is sushi over rice. It's usually uh, a little bit of wasabi underneath. So a lot of times people mix their soy sauce with their wasabi. Mm -hmm. Is that bad? Or is that That's okay? okay but we don't recommend it because there's enough wasabi underneath there okay. so you just kind of dip a little bit a lot okay. of times people just over dip you don't want to over dip your soy sauce either you just want to put a little bit just enough to accompany the fish you don't want to because overpower it yeah overpower. you gotta yeah make sure all the, the flavors blend Absolutely. okay sashimi and what makes sashimi different sashimi, than just saying sushi sashimi is actually fish without rice usually right. it's thin cut uh bite-sized pieces so yeah, like right you know here. just yeah. enough to just get your mouth going and working with it to taste the actual fish. You get too much of a bite, then you're just chewing. Ah, uh, okay, maki? Maki is actually a Japanese term for roll, and that's our traditional roll that you'll see, a California roll mm -hmm. that you see all the time. So um, we've actually kind of, one of these are one of our new rolls. Uh, it's kind of a new expansion of what your traditional rolls will be. This is more like a specialty roll, and that one's our big apple. That one has yellowtail cucumber on the inside, topped off with fresh tuna. Then it's a yuzu compressed apple 
Wow. And then a little bit of fresh uh, micro seashell. They're like little artistic pieces, aren't they? Yeah. And then even now, we uh, we don't do soy sauce dip in them. We actually make a little sauce for it. That one's a little bit of yuzu, mirin, and a little bit of lemon zest, so. Oh, cool, okay. Yeah, soy sauce is, I mean, it's always good, but yeah, when you can get really creative with all these different types of, mm. Oh, that is good. Yeah, that, super uh, bright, super refreshing. You pour that over some ice, that'll be a good drink. There you okay. go. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, really good. Okay, so the wasabi, I, I can't tell you how many times people for their first time have mistaken this for avocado. Avocado You will only make that mistake. Yeah. yeah, you'll make that avocado guacamole. You'll make that mistake only once. Uh, and that's something that can enhance, like you were saying, don't don't overpower anything. Can enhance to the ginger. Do we do that to clean our palate or do that to eat along with that the fish? That is for cleansing of the palate. Okay. A, lot of play, a lot of people, they put it right on top of the sushi. Then that takes away from the actual taste of the fish or of the roll or of the sashimi that they eat. You do not want to do that. You want to just put it in between bites so you can cleanse it for the next bite. Yeah. Different for the next bite of fish so you don't get them mixed up, the different oils of the fish. Yeah. All right, and you have things for us to drink to complement with our fish as well and a great atmosphere. Absolutely. Okay, you can sample Tabio at their Katy location or at the Stroll of the Season event in Katy on December 8th. And for more information, just go to greatdayhouston.com. Thank right. you very much. Thank you.